Does benign multiple sclerosis exist? I'm gonna answer that question right now. Howdy, Aaron Boster here with the Ohio Health MS Center, answering a question I was recently posed. Does benign multiple sclerosis actually exist? If this is your first time on my channel, thank you for coming, I hope you like it, and please feel free to subscribe so that you can continue to get content like this one. Also, please make sure to include all your comments and questions below. The concept of benign multiple sclerosis has been discussed in the MS literature for quite some time. The most common definition is an EDSS, or Expanded Disability Status Scale, of three or less, having had MS for at least 15 years. Now, the Expanded Disability Status Scale is a scale that goes from zero, which is I'm completely normal, to 10, which is I'm dead from MS. And it goes one through 10. And a three is considered to be moderately affected. Um, and so the thought is, if you've made it 15 years with MS and your EDSS is only a three or less, well then that's benign. Now as you may have guessed, I have many problems with that definition and with the concept of benign MS. And so let's start to talk about it. First of all, the EDSS scale is a scale that largely measures walking. And so if you're mostly motorically functional, you could have a very low EDSS which would be not able to pick up the majority of the invisible symptoms that people struggle with in MS. For example, the most common reasons that people leave the workforce in MS is pathologic fatigue and cognitive impairment. Neither of those are very uh, appropriately or easily uh, identified using the EDSS. So I take issue with a comment that an EDSS of three or better um, means that there's no significant disability because there most certainly can be. Second of all, in more recent literature, we've learned that an EDSS of one or two includes a lot of real disability. People with an EDSS less than three may not have normal thinking and memory. They may not have normal uh, mood. They may not be able to do normal activities the way that they once did. And I, I, I take issue with saying, oh, less than three is okay, because I'm not sure it's so okay. I have taken care of people that have had a low EDSS score and they've had quiet disease for a many long time. We're talking years. And then, a decade or two into their disease process, it picks up. And their disease goes from what might have been described as benign to something a bit more aggressive. When you look at the literature, I would submit that upwards of a third of patients that initially met a diagnosis, or excuse me, a definition of benign MS go on to have active disease. If there was a way that we could ahead of time identify someone who was going to have almost no disease activity, well that would be amazing. And if we could ahead of time identify someone like that, it might allow us to not be as aggressive in our recommendations for treatments, etc., etc. The reality in 2018 is that we have no mechanism to predict with certainty that someone's going to be okay. And if we allow them to accrue disability, we can't give it back generally. And so, whereas when you look at large populations, there may be rare patients. I have rare patients that really do seem to have a very quiet disease course. But I would not ask them to stop a medicine. I would not ask them to take it easy. I still think that we have to be fastidious because if we're not, something that might have been quiet could become not so quiet. And there's no way to reverse that. So my brief answer is, there may be the very rare patient who actually experiences a benign course, but the vast majority of people are not so lucky. And taking a disease-modifying therapy, whether you have a benign course or not, is your insurance policy against future disease activity, future attacks, new spots, and disability progression. And whereas I think academically, it may be somewhat interesting to think about a benign phenotype of MS, I think clinically it gives the wrong message to the vast majority of people living and impacted by this condition. And I would not encourage someone to decide, hey, this is benign and we don't need to do anything about it. Once again, it's Aaron Boster sharing my own personal opinion. I'm with Ohio Health MS Center and thank you very much for tuning in. Take care and have a great day.